Touchdown! Welcome to Stress Free You. Discover how to turn off stress with the flick of a switch with Matt Rush and Rich Taylor. Good day, Brother Rich. How's it going? It's going well, Matt. So let's dive into this little thing that I'm sure is going to be quite controversial with uh, a few of uh, our listeners and the people around, well, quite frankly, the globe. Let's talk a little bit today about how do we deal with stress and sports and what's that cause and effect? What do you think about that? I think it's one of those hidden things people don't aren't aware of. Yeah, like okay, so what? Like when we were talking about that, and this is a conversation that you and I have had uh, multiple times uh, in regards to dealing with stress and turning off the stress switches that we have in life. How does how does that apply to sports? For Pete's sake, let's look at the first thing. Okay, there's two types of fans. There's the fan that sits there and just casually watches it as an observer. I mean, I've watched some golf matches and you know you fall asleep to them. <laughs> But then there's the fanatic that puts on the jersey and paints the face and is yelling and screaming at the TV or goes to the actual game and all that kind of stuff and has his puffy hand in his right hand going while he's got a probably a beer or a pizza in the left hand type thing. That's the fanatic, you know, and that's the kind of people we're talking about pretty much today and the effect of that lifestyle on stress yeah it's probably something that no one has ever really considered before but i've got and and i'm i'm not throwing you under the bus i'm using for as an example and that is my wife's uncle he has a dedicated room in his house to the dallas cowboys Hmm. it is above the garage it is like a shrine to everything cowboy so during games he is that fan doesn't always go to the game because they live in tennessee But during the game, he is that fan in his own home, and he is into it. And we all know those people who can get that into any kind of sport. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the interesting thing about sports is they're played at the off time. So basically, you know, 9 to 5 during the week, people are working. But while they're working, they're basically, if they're in a stressful situation, like a stressful job, which a lot of people are, not to mention their commute and this and that and getting the kids home and getting them out of school and all that yada yada stuff, they go get home and that's when you know, you're know you supposed to be doing rest, digest, and restore and getting out of fight or fight or freeze. But the games are always at night or on the weekend, which is the time for your body to do rest, digest, and and restore. And yet, if you're activated into a game with all the the, the you know ambiance of yelling and screaming at the TV and you know being pulled this way or that way, you're in fight or flight or freeze the whole time. Oh, absolutely. And how many times have we been guilty of getting that involved in a sport that for the record, people are being paid multi millions of dollars to play. Billions of dollars, yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, absolutely billions. And, and they're being, this is their job to, to do this, uh, to do this game. And we get so emotionally invested over something that we're not getting any return over whatsoever. And we get that bought into it and we get that, that involved in the game. And then at the end of the game, how many times have we just been wiped out, exhausted, tired. How could that be? We've been watching it from the couch in our comfort of our home, but yet we're exhausted. How could we be so tired from that? Well, it's because it's extremely stressful. Your body's dumping cortisol and all the other stress hormones into your bloodstream to react to danger. And that's what stress is. It's our body's reaction to danger. So you know, the whole time you're on the, think about it, you're, three hours, you're on the edge of your seat. Okay. Edge of your seat. That means you're like, you're in panic mode the whole time. And this is rest time, not panic mode time. I'll give you an example. Uh, I lived in Tampa, and I'm a Buccaneers fan for a long time. And it was a Monday night game, and they didn't get too many Monday night games. They finally had a Monday night game against the Colts at home in Tampa. And I'm watching it, and they're they're blowing the Colts out. Peyton Manning and the Colts are getting wiped out by the Bucs. At the halftime, they're way ahead. And then the other second half comes, and like, and it was like a lot of people left the the stadium because they thought the Bucks were going to win. But it goes like 
you know, to the last end of the game and then it's tied, then they go into overtime and they lose, the Bucks lose. And like, so I'm like, I was like devastated. I'm laying in bed, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, jacked up from the game. I'm thinking, I gotta go to work tomorrow. This is my week starts, okay? And I'm all jacked up. I can't go to sleep. I'm like, the Bucks aren't paying me money to watch their game. If they were, that's a different story. But they're not. And I took this big hit, you know, physically. It literally. Emotionally. You yeah, yeah. And I'm like, my next day is gonna be messed up because I watched a football game. Now, how dumb is that? <laughs> and and then you get to work the next day, and then what's the reactions there? Then you get the 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 um the banter back and forth between rival fans. So then you start reliving it all again. And and not that that you know maybe not all of that is bad, but it's like you said, you're not getting paid to do that, and yet it is impacting what you do and what you do get paid for, and and that's that's a bad thing. It's a very bad thing, and you know the water cooler talk is oh, Lita, did you see what happened? The boys, you know, did yesterday is oh, it was terrible. You see how he dropped the pass or missed this thing. Now you're talking about all the negative things that happened about the game. You're reliving it and and going back in the fight or flight or freeze. You know, it's just it's just like enough. I mean, sports. The core of most sports, Matt is violence, if you really think about it. It's like based on the ancient gladiators. You know, two guys fighting each other to death. Now, we don't fight each other to death now, but... But that's the some, basis of it. That's a, It's based on violence. I mean, boxing. One guy is pummeling the other guy, you know, as hard as he can and trying to knock him out. Yeah. I mean, and, and the fans are like raving fanatics. Like, they're in the place, yeah, I hit him, man. I'll be like, it's like... It's like animals. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like turning people and turning them into animals. Right. It's the Rod- <laughs> it's the Roddy Dangerfield quote. <laughs> yeah, he went to a he went to a boxing match and a hockey game broke out. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, what have we come to as society or as individuals when that's what we are looking for? We're not looking for the hockey match. We're looking for oh, the no. fight. Yeah, that's right. And like in football, if someone had there's like a really good hit on somebody, they'll play it, you know, like boom, and they'll play it like, you know, 20 times from 15 different angles. And it was, ah, what a hit, what a hit. And I always thought this was really strange about football. You can like literally knock someone's eyeballs out on a legal hit in football. But if you go over to that person after the play's over, who a person who's got head to toe in, you know, a protective equipment, and tap him and, and like, or just give him a little tiny shove. Oh, that's unnecessary reference. Personal <laughs> foul, fifteen yard penalty. It's like, wait a minute. How can that? You just, just knock this block off. <laughs> you can knock this block off, but then you can't like tap the guy and and touch him after the play. That's unnecessary roughness. I mean, or or you can't even like uh, taunt the guy. You know what I mean? It's like, where has this sport evolved to when that kind of stuff happens? Yeah, and it's that's a that's a true story. And what what are we looking for? We're looking for that. We're looking for you don't go to NASCAR hoping everything goes smooth around the track. Let's be honest here. What are you looking for? It's that crash. I went to one auto race. My brother took me. My older brother is the only redneck in Long Island. I call him great guy, <laughs> but he took me to an auto race, a little local one. I, it wasn't anything i don't think it was anything organized and it was a small track and i remember just sitting there and vroom, 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 and the cars kept going around and around and around like that and then the moment a car hit another car hit the wall everybody stands up and like oh look at that you know they spilled their beer and and dropped their rubber hot dog when <laughs> when the, when the hit happened they had to go get another rubber hot dog and another, another warm beer you know um and i just remember then it started raining and they put speedy dry type stuff to, to dry the, the, the course. And every time it, they started again, they came around the track, we were in the corner, the, a, a cloud of, of this like kitty litter type stuff came. I was literally came home. Every inch of my body was covered. It went down on my shirt and everything. So I had a great time, Matt. It was awesome. <laughs> but there was the crashes. It's still it was a crash. For. And yeah. who, which one of us would go out on the street corner and see <laughs> a minivan driving down the road and think, oh, man, I hope I get to watch that car wreck. 
Yeah, like, I mean, how sadistic is that? Do, we wouldn't do that, <laughs> and yet we yeah. do it at a. Well, people will pay money by the hundreds of thousands of people to go and go to a, a car race, and that's that's ultimately what you're looking for. Is you're looking for the drama, you're looking that's for right. the wreck. And then let's talk about another sport, rugby. Well, we won't even touch rugby. I mean, rugby is just no equipment. It's football with no equipment. So that one says it all in itself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I grew up in New Mexico on a farm and ranch. Um, we didn't even know what rugby was <laughs> in our part of the world. My first experience with rugby was when I went to college and I watched a, a match uh, in, in uh, where I went to school. And I'm like, oh, my good night. This is intense. Like, this is like true gladiator style stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and basketball. Right. Okay, so let's go to basketball. How many times have have you seen or heard people say about modern day basketball and they'll the number one quote, I guarantee it, number one quote you can hear people uh, talking about when it comes to the refs is, well, they just let them get away with murder now. It's like, yeah. what? It's kind of true, too. I mean, the 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 level of contact that you can even now have in basketball is so intense that you have people getting hurt all the time. It's crazy. And, and as we're watching all this violence, it's extremely stressful to the people who are watching it. And, you know, it's keeping you in fight or flight or freeze the whole time. Yeah, that's you know? the, yeah. it's not just about the physical stress that we're watching or witnessing. It's about what is, what is it doing to our bodies when we are so ultimately bought into something that we are allowing our bodies to be in fight, flight, or freeze mode just with them. And I mean, we can be in all three too. I mean, down to the down to the wire. Somebody, if he makes a basket, they win the game. If he doesn't, they lose the game. Everybody is holding their breath. You are in freeze mode. You're in fight mode right with them when they're going down. You you get in every one of those modes during during a sport that, like you said, you're not even getting paid to watch. Yeah, and here's another thing that people don't realize: say you're watching a sport, and another sport, the other team that you the opposing team that you you know you're not a fan of they have a star player and all of a sudden you see the star player get hurt a little bit and you're like yeah i hope he stays hurt cuz he'll stay out of the game That's so right. now you now you're wishing harm on, on another human being so that your team that you're not you know can win i mean is that weird or what yeah, i mean and, come on and w- this is another thing that may some people may like raise an eyebrow up towards, but when you wish that kind of negativity on somebody else, it always, always, always comes back on you. Absolutely. What you put out, you get back. Yep. Every time. It all comes back to me, the old man said, as he spit into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never heard that in my <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> but being in West Texas, Eastern New Mexico, anybody ever been here before knows the wind blows. So I get that. That makes total yeah. sense to me. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And then baseball. Well, well we all. Okay, now that's all right. Nobody cares nobody about cares baseball. Baseball is boring. <laughs> no, just kidding. I, I actually like baseball uh, from, from because it's just what, it's one of those sports that you can go to a game and it's just laid back and it's no big deal and it's kind of america's pastime still and most people don't but its viewership and its attendance is dropping off because it is perceived as boring that's right it's pastime it's pastime and yeah. now and now everybody is like you know you're waiting for you're waiting for the crash at home plate you're waiting for the guy to jump up to try to catch the the pop fly and hit the wall and spin over into the fans and then you stand yep. and cheer when something crazy like that happens but yeah. but so it goes to that too but the other thing is think about the last time we which was several years ago uh the last time I went to um a Texas Rangers a baseball game just the amount of stress that it put on my soul to get into the stadium and to our seats was unbelievable. The parking, the people, the temperatures, the I mean, it's just crazy. And we're like, we're actually paying money for this. Oh, yeah, it's nuts. And another thing is I, I did want to bring this up because I've been around a long time. I remember I used to I used to fall hockey growing up in New England. I we played hockey, we played floor hockey, we played street hockey, we played hockey any in the hallway at home. We were hockey nuts. I used to listen to games, watch the games, and all that stuff. We used to play on the ponds. Uh, you name it, we played it. But 
I remember I used to go to New York Ranger games in Madison Square Garden in New York. Back then, in between the action, every once in a while you'd hear, you know, the organ just play something and the fans would get a little pumped up and that is it. And then I went to a lightning game down here in Tampa a couple of years ago. And in between when they the, the play, they've got rock music blah, 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 playing like this. They got lights flashing like this. And it's like you're at you're at like some dramatic, you know, a truck jumping, crashing thing. <laughs> it was like so intense. They literally stop at the second they drop the puck. And so it's totally different than what it used to be. It's high intensity, and and it's it is, it, and, and even like even in baseball, like that last game we went to, the baseball game was the same thing. They they have so much entertainment now. They rebuild stadiums now so that they can provide more comfort to keep you there longer. And then in between the quote boring stuff, they have people you know doing things, running around, activities, big boards, flashing stuff to try to keep you engaged, which is keeping you in. Fight, flight, or freeze mode at some point in time because that's going to keep you emotionally invested in this. And then at the end of the day, we haven't we haven't enjoyed a pastime. We have been exhausted by a pastime. Yeah. We have been emotionally drained by a pastime. Absolutely. And if you add gambling to it, Ooh. if 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 you add the fact that you know not only is the game dramatic enough to keep you stressed out, but now you've got you know, money riding on it, whether it's 10 or $20 or $50 or a couple hundred dollars. Now, now you've added an extra dimension of stress. So if you lose, now you get, you know, you double bombed out, you team loss, and then you lost a couple hundred bucks. So you've just taken something that was highly stressful and made it even more highly stressful. And if you, here's the thing about gambling that a lot of people don't understand. I, I'm one of those people that I never gamble. I'm just, I just know it's like, it's like a tax on ignorant people, and I don't That's mean right. that in a bad way. It, it is, or desperate people, I should say. But one time, like 25 years ago, I was in a deli, and, you know, I said, I was just in a weak moment. I bought one of those lot, dollar lottery tickets, just one. I spent a dollar and bought one. I scratched it off, and I won $3. Hey, okay. there you go. So that's a 300% increase. And, you know, I am the most rational person in the world when it comes to money. I should have just said, yeah, I'll just, hey, $3. Give me my $3. I'll, I'll walk out. But you know what, Matt? Something came over me and said, you know what? You just put a dollar and won $3. Do it again. Take the, take the $3. Now you can buy three lottery tickets with it, and you have a three-time better chance of winning more. So I took the $3, and I bought three more lottery tickets, rubbed them all off, and didn't get anything. I lost my $3. So I'm saying even when it, there's a thing about gambling, even people like me who are highly rational and understand it's not a smart thing to do, you can get caught up in it really, really easily. I, I, absolutely. And we haven't even gone into this dimension, not really yet. You said something earlier about the rubber hot dog. So no, let's let's dive into that because you've got you got the stress involved in in being a fanatic. You've got major stress there. You've got being in fight, flight, or freeze mode. Throw gambling into it. That throws another element and another layer and dimension to it. But then let's talk about what we eat during those uh, fanatic moments. I can guarantee you there's not too many stadiums in the world. There's not too many home living rooms that during the midst of the big game, you're bringing out a bowl of broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The price of being an athletic supporter is... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was, a, that was a bit of a stretch there, Rich. <laughs> you know, I was itching to say it. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, like you said, you're you're eating the pizza, you're drinking the beer, you're you're yelling and screaming at the TV. And here's another thing: if you're drinking alcohol, and you're you're just getting more out of control, you know, it's going to let down your inhibitions, and you're going to be acting like an idiot if you're getting drunk, you know, while watching a game. And then you're going to get in the car and drive home and be a menace to people. And you know, for someone like me and my wife who are rear-ended, oh, well, actually, both of us have yep. had experience of being hit by drunk drivers it's uh, mm -hmm. it's not a good thing no it's not so you know that's the, there's that health aspect to it but when we're talking about freeing ourselves of stress part of the stress that we talk about and we will even go into more later is is ha the stress that are it happens internally from what we consume and then if you compile all these things together you eat 
horrible food during uh, most of the time during these events. And then the next day we wonder why we feel so bad and we're so exhausted and we're so tired when it was actually our time to, to stop. And it was our time to, to repair ourselves and to rest up for the week and to get ready to, to march on. And yet we have completely depleted ourselves and we have actually wasted vast amounts of time. I Googled how many hours of sports are on TV right now. Want to guess? Do you want to guess? Uh, I can't even imagine. This in in 20, the stat was in 2017. There were 134,000 hours of sports programming on TV. That is 5,583 days of sports programming on TV in one year if you strung them out one right after the other. Wow, that it's like get a life. I mean, I remember before ESPN came on the air, which is a long time ago, and there was not 24 hour sports back then. It was just like there was a wild world of sports on Sunday, and there were actual sporting events. But now you could watch, you know, you can watch sports anytime you want, and um, any time of day of any and any sport you want. Exactly. And 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 now even like on ESPN, you can even watch. Old show, old matches. I mean, you can watch ESPN history uh, and and see some of the matches that happened in the past. So there's no end to where you can consume it. It's like, should you consume it? And if you're consuming something that is highly stressful, well, that that goes against you know rest, digest, and restore. Yeah. And and I say, you know, I'm I'm like the sleeper sport fan. I, I don't mind putting something on for a little bit on Sunday afternoon just so I can fall asleep <laughs> and take my Sunday afternoon nap. I could care less what the outcome is going to be afterwards as long as I got my Sunday afternoon nap. Um, yeah. but, but think about think about all of this that we've been talking about and the fact that, okay, when we when we tell people one of the stress switches that they have engaged that they may not even know they have engaged is is sports. I realize that's probably a little out there for some people, but I hope this shows some of the layers that you can build into yourself. The, the switches, multiple switches, even within the sports world that you could have turned on that are causing added stress to your life. And for a lot of people that started when they're young, their their parents started watching it. And, um, you know, it's kind of this how they grew up and, it's almost like, you know, the guys are in one side of the room yelling and screaming at the TV and the women are in the kitchen on, on the weekend or on a Sunday. And it kind of segregates the family time. And it's just it's I mean, we're I know what we're saying is dramatically different than most people think. But think about it. If the weekend and actually, I think we should rename we should rename the weekend from the weekend to the strong. Yeah, end that's right. Because it that's really good. it really should be the time you repair. It should be the strong end, not the weekend. <laughs> We we'll spell it differently. I like it, <laughs> but 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 so much of it is spent. You know, think think about it. Uh, you, you finish on Friday, you're you're exhausted, and on Saturday you're doing the honeydew stuff around the house. You're doing this. You're taking your kids to soccer match, running here, running there. Sunday morning, you know, maybe you go to church, maybe you don't, maybe you you sleep in a little bit. And on Sunday afternoon, you know, the day before that you go back to work. Okay, you're watching two games, three games in a row, and you're, you're, you're jacked up the whole time. Or on Saturday, it's college football or college basketball different times. You're, you're, you're using your free time, through your rest and digest and restore time, on being jacked up watching sports, memorizing player stats. I mean, you're adding more stuff to your brain. I mean, how is that really all? Oh, great. He just got another touchdown. That, that's great, but it's like, how does that benefit mm-hmm. you? Once you memorize something, it'll help you. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. And and this is one thing we know. This is a little controversial, and it's just and it's different. But we little, it's a lot. <laughs> that's true. I'm sure we're gonna catch some uh, catch some uh, comments on this one. Um, we hope that this starts to unveil a little bit about the amount of stress that we can just inadvertently turn on, and we don't even know it. Because what you just said, though, is also a, a real truism. When you said it's kind of how we grew up. I think about growing up watching and and my dad watching sports. Okay, we didn't have it 24 hours a day, seven days a week back then. 
we if we watched a game, it was a game and then it was off. The TV turned off and we did something. You were not allowed to stay in the house all Sunday afternoon and just watch TV. So it was even even then you may have been in, involved, but it was at least segmented and it was at least monitored time wise. Now it's just like it, we've been sucked in as a society and, and as a culture, we've been sucked in and they've marketed it in a way that have drawn us in and created true fanatics to the point that, hey, we don't even realize how stressed we are at the end of a Sunday afternoon or end of a Monday night. And, and, and then we've still got we've still got life to live. And we've just given yeah, away segments of it to someone else. Absolutely, and not to mention, I was—I um, don't—I don't watch. We both don't mm-hmm. watch sports. I but I was at a family gathering uh, on a Sunday, and they had the football games on, and so I was in the room. So I ended up watching a little bit. And you know what was really annoying was, at every break, they played the same commercial over and over again. So the next break, same commercial. The same. It was like the. Seven commercials in a row, same one, and they're all bad commercials. Right. And it was like, I'm so now the game can jack you up, which didn't me because I'm out of it, but it does. But the commercials are so, and they're selling you something, and no one likes to be sold. And it's that that alone is really irritating. So the combination is is just obnoxious. Yeah, I agreed. Uh, and and when I say I, I could care less about sports, I, I really could. It just it doesn't matter to me. It's not a part of my DNA. I could enjoy it a little bit and then walk away from it. It does not impact my life. Um, and, and, and that's that's where we've gotten to. We haven't always been here, but this is where we've gotten to. And I can't tell you now how much better it feels on Sunday afternoons to, to have that kind of rest and that kind of freedom and to be able to turn that switch off. So what are we telling people or what are we offering instead of being a fanatic, a fanatic, versus what we are going to encourage everyone to move towards. Well, sports are not bad no. if you play them instead of watching them. Now, now, if you've got a kid that's in sports, you're going to go and support your kid and all that stuff. We, yeah, absolutely. we get that. Yeah, well, and, and, and along the line, my brother-in-law is a coach, and so my, my nephews play. My, I, it, we, we get that part of it. And there's a lot of good that right. come from high school athletics and getting kids involved in teamwork and, and that kind of camaraderie. So you're right. That's not what we're talking about. There are people who even take that, though, to a far right. extreme and have allowed themselves to become so stressed out over a child game that it's gone to another level as well. Right. Absolutely. Well, we're saying instead of that, play the sport or play a sport. Now, maybe you can't play, you know, football with pads and stuff. You know, that's not a healthy thing for most people to do. So just toss a football around. We were together with some family this weekend and we had a touch football game in the backyard. It was great. We got some exercise. We had some fun and, you know, burn some calories or whatever you want to call it. And it was fun. Or if you can't throw a football around, throw a Frisbee around or I know this can sound strange, but pickleball is really a popular sport. It's like one of the fastest growing sports, and a lot of seniors are playing it. So, and I play it when I can. And I'm telling you, I've seen some 80 or 85 year old people playing it, and they're getting some exercise, having fun. Pickleball is taking tennis and ping pong and combining it. <laughs> and if you want to just go on YouTube and search pickleball, it's something most people, even if you're not highly athletic, can play and play well. So, yeah, but okay. there's always something you can do to, to get some kind of activity. So you're saying for those of us that aren't athletical, we might could uh, handle pickleball? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for those, yeah. Or I'm saying there's lots of things. Go for a walk in the park. All these things de-stress your body. That's right. Okay, this is the good side. This is what helps restore your body uh, by getting – because the people have built up stress hormones during the week – exercise and actually sweating is a great way to get uh, the stress hormones out of your body. It's our natural, our body's natural way of getting rid of stress hormones that we're mm-hmm. not using to fight the uh, saber tooth tiger or something like that, that we yeah. got from the boss yelling at us instead. Yeah. Right. So exercise, not only is it a nice diversion, but it's very healthy physical wise as far as getting rid of stress. Yeah. And so what we're saying is we get involved, move your body, body to to be able to release some of the stress that's built up not sit and allow something to add stress to you 
uh, Katie for, and it is that simple though. Cause Katie and I, every Sunday afternoon, uh, that we're able to, we go on a walk Sunday afternoons and typically it's a long walk. We typically do, you know, like three to four miles and we take the dog with us and it's just, it's just, it's relaxing. It's, it's good. It's, it's a great way to, to end the uh, Sunday and, and be able to get ready to start our week. So we're saying, get out there, do something. Don't just consume it, but do it. Get active, be involved, play the sport, be with your family, um, build that camaraderie and that team with with your own team. Absolutely. You know, get up there and move it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and and uh, leave the uh, jumbo uh, plastic hot dog at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. All right. Uh, anything else you got to add to uh, Brother Rich? No, I think that's it. Just uh, get active. And as long as you physically and the doctor says it's okay, then just do what you can and you'll feel much better for it. And that's right. Your, your weekend will turn into a strong end. Absolutely. All right, we invite you all to come along on this journey as we continue to turn off the stress switches that we have engaged in our lives so that you can truly live the stress-free life that you were born to live. For more information, visit us at stressfreeyou.net and subscribe to the Stress-Free You Show. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.